Hello pilots and welcome back to Welcome to DCS World. This is going to be part three. Today I'm going to go over um, a few things that um, hopefully will help you. We're going to talk about uh, mods and what they are and how to install them. We're going to talk about uh, you know missions and liveries and how to copy them down and how to install them as well for your aircraft, how to find out where your aircraft liveries are. We're going to talk about um, a couple different tools that may make your DCS life a little bit easier, and um, hopefully you guys enjoy. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, we are starting at digitalcombatsimulator.com, okay, the homeland. We're going to come down here, and we're going to go to user files, and by the way, there is a link to the forums if you ever need to get there and can't figure that out. It takes you right to it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, as I said, come down to user files from downloads. And here you have a diff, um, all the different games and versions of DCS World. Um, I don't typically mess with this when messing with the filters. Um, I just look at the date. Okay, if it's a couple years old, as you can see here, um, if this date is a couple years old, you probably want to stay away from it because it's probably changed or broken. Uh, liveries, skins, things like that, that works just fine. Um, you may notice a color difference, however. Um, it may not look as bright and uh, shiny as some of the newer stuff does as the uh, textures have changed. All right, but let's go ahead and start there. So we're gonna start with um, skins, okay? And we're just gonna go ahead and come down and find my girl here, the F-18 Hornet, and we're just gonna go filter. Okay, and here you can find pages and pages and pages of liveries. And anything that has an arrow here can be cycled through, okay? And I actually grabbed this one already, so I'm gonna show you guys what we do with it now. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously come to our downloads directory and then let me come back here to save games for a second. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab this guy and if you don't have 7-zip I highly recommend you get it. Just Google 7-zip and then or 7-zip download. Just make sure you grab the 64-bit version if you're on Windows 10 or higher. Um, meaning no matter what version of 10. Um, but anyway I'm going to go to extract here okay and I'm gonna find this folder first and uh, or this file the description Lua and again edit with notepad plus plus notepad plus plus is again a free text editor I highly recommend you grab it again grab the 64-bit version um, and I'll show you what the difference is so if you open this up in regular old notepad this is what it looks like okay if you open up in notepad plus plus it looks like this much more drawn out easier to deal with blah 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 and a couple things we're going to do first is we can come down here. This is the name that will display with inside DCS when we go to look for the livery. What I'm going to do is just sort of grab that, change it there. The next thing that I'm going to do is, and this isn't required, but you can add countries equals. We're going to use the squiggly bracket. Can't ever remember what the heck it's called. Quotations USA. And what this is doing is identifying what country can actually use this. And actually, we'll do two of them. We'll do comma, and we're going to add USAF for United States of America aggressors. Um, basically, this is how you get all the allied aircraft onto the red team. And then we're going to close it, hit save. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and show you how to install it. First thing you want to do is go to your C drive. It's going to be C drive no matter where you have DCS installed. C drive is what we're looking for in this particular setup. And then we're going to go to users. You're going to find your login. In my case, it's overkill. We're going to come down and find our saved games directory. If you have DCS stable version, it'll probably just say DCS. I don't think it says stable, but it might. Um, but either way, if you're on open beta, you're going to be finding open beta. Okay. And then what we're going to do, and by the way, it is possible for you to have both. Um, we're going to come down and find liveries, okay? If this folder does not exist, simply create it. Make sure it is titled exactly as you see here. And then we're going to find our FA-18C Hornet. Now, again, it needs to be titled exact as it is here. Let me show you where to find this naming scheme. This part gets a little tricky, so watch me closely here. We're going to go to your installation drive, wherever DCS is installed on, whether it be C, D, A, J, Y, I don't care. We're going to go to DCS World Open Beta in my case. Again, this may just say DCS World for you. We're going to go to the core mods. Now, most of the aircraft are going to be in core mods, um, but some may also be in the mods. So if you can't find it in core mods, come here and check mods aircraft, okay? But we're going to go for core mods, aircraft, 
FA18C. Now notice it's different than what is titled here, so stay with me. FA18C liveries. Remember that capital L, as I said, it was up here. And there it is, FA18C Hornet. We come in here, and these are all the liveries that come with the Hornet installation. Okay, so you just find your folder make and name it exactly as you see here over here in our saved games directory. Okay, then we're just going to open it up. Now these are all the liveries for my wing. And so what I'm going to do, I didn't want to close that. Because I'm going to go back to my download here. I'm going to find this one. This is all we need is the name of the livery. So that's here. And actually we can go ahead and rename it here. Now how the folder is named does not matter. We do not care how it's named. It could be named Pink Pumpkin. And um, DCS will still call it Hammer Alaskan Aggressor. Remember, as we saw in the notepad editor. Okay, so we're going to just drop this guy in here. This is the folder name is not for um, our reference only. Okay, so that way we know what we're looking at. All right, so that's how you install a livery. And I will show you in a moment when we launch DCS um, that it works. Okay, the next thing I want to show you guys real quick. Let's come back to our um downloads here and we're going to go to single mission or multiplayer mission whichever you want or campaign these are all user created missions so you can have single missions multiplayer missions some uh, user made campaigns that are in here so we're going to go to single mission go filter and here's a cool training mission right here off the top okay you have training missions case three uh, practice missions um, here is a just a, a sortie okay deep strike mission um, you got a whole bunch of things to, to chew on here okay Round attack mission for the F-18C Stennis version, super carrier version, so it breaks all kinds of things down for you based on what you have. Okay, so take a look through these. You can find a lot of missions to practice with. In this case, this is a uh, AGM-65E and F Maverick tutorial or a training mission while using the targeting pod against moving targets. Okay, now I think I already grabbed this, so let me just double check here and make sure it is here it is not but i might have already put it in so give me a second missions nope i didn't all right cool so let's go ahead and grab it so we're going to download this okay then we're going to bring our two folders back up missions downloads and as you can guess so we're going to go to open beta or whichever installation you have again and we're just going to find the missions folder now, notice the file structure. I created most of these folders, okay? From here, yeah, down, I put these here, okay? So you can customize the folder structure here, you know, training missions, operations, campaigns, you know, however you want to do it. Um, in our case, I'm just going to grab this guy here, and what you want is the .miz. So if this is if this says .zip, .rar, .7zip, whatever, if it says anything but .miz, you need to extract it and pull just the .miz out. That's what you need. Okay, that's the actual mission file. And we're going to grab that and drop it in here. Okay, very simple. And or we could put it in any of these folders if we wanted to. And then we're going to go ahead and launch DCS. And while that's launching, for those of you who are new and watching this and enjoying this, hopefully, if you guys are interested in taking a peek at uh, our wing, you can find us at www.vcw13.com. Um, I would absolutely consider us a training wing. Um, we have pilots of all skill levels. We welcome pilots of all skill levels. The only deal is you must be 18 and over. So now that we are in DCS, what we'll do is come to Mission. And you can see this top folder here. It says My Missions. Now, I'm in a different directory. I'm in the YouTube folder. So all I'm going to do is click this guy. And you can see all of our folder structure just like we saw before. Right here. Okay. Matches. And here's our mission. And all we would do is launch it. The thing you do want to watch for is the map. If you do not have the map associated with the mission, um, it's obviously not going to work. Okay. You would need to purchase that in order for that to work out. Okay, but let's go ahead and go to mine here, and I'll show you guys how the livery worked.
Doesn't really matter what plane we pick here. Okay. So, we're going to just go to our F2 view so we can see it. We're going to hit our radio menu, for the, so the backslash above the enter key. Go to ground crew, rearm and refuel, and here are our liveries. Now, I don't know if this works in VR, but on the monitor, you can move this out of your way so you can see it. And I'm going to scroll up, and there's our skin that we just installed. And we can just hit OK, and there we go. Okay, now it will go through the entire rearming process, so you do have to wait. But the livery selection is instant, and you can cycle through it, and so that way you can see what, uh, which one you have selected prior to um, actually selecting it. Okay. Now, the one other thing that I do want to show you guys about missions, okay, is if we come in here. So, for example, we had our new Maverick tutorial here, or Maverick practice, not tutorial. If I didn't want that, I can delete it. And then just go into a different folder and come in here. Now these, remember, I talked about this in the previous video. These are all the different missions that are associated with training for the aircraft. Um, in some cases, there are campaigns. Um, but anyway, these are all instant action missions. So that's what those were. So you have mission qualifications here. There's a whole bunch for the Hornet. These are not to be mistaken with the training area. These are just different sorties you can run. Combat mission qualifications 1v1 2v2 things like that so there's a whole bunch of missions already built in that you can get to um that are kind of fun so there's an a10c missions defend the camp hide out in the weeds like there's a whole bunch here and there's pretty much something for every single aircraft you know at least to give you something to do to get you started okay so and again don't mistake that with the training section training section these are all training missions where the mission section, these are all instant action missions. So you're going to be in combat scenarios, okay? All right, so now let's get into um, a little bit more um, in depth here. And so the first thing we're going to do is talk about mods. Now, before we actually get into how to use a mod, let's talk about some tools that make it a lot easier to navigate. Now, let me pull these out of the way for a minute here. And let's go to... Where are you? Open Mod Manager. Okay, so we have something called OVGME that was used for a very long time. And all it is is a mod manager. It allows you to quickly um, install and uninstall mods. And the reason why we want something like this is, well, a couple reasons. Number one, mods tend to break, you know, with some patches. So sometimes you'll have to, um, you know, uh, replace them or whatever it may be. Um, and then... Um, in other scenarios, you may just have a mod you don't like, okay? But another one is, um, actually, is that uh, some mods will break what's called integrity check. For those of you who don't know, a lot of multiplayer servers, in order to join them, you have to pass integrity check. And all integrity check does is make sure that the core files of the game are um, as designed, okay? Basically, make sure nobody's cheating, okay? There are certain mods that can make things drastically easier for others and would give them a, an advantage over other players, based on the default installation files of the game or the modified installation files of the game. Okay, but there are plenty of mods that do serve a purpose, okay, and that won't break integrity checks. So um, let's go ahead and we're going to talk about this mod manager. Now, I've already downloaded it. So we're going to come over here and it's an executable. Now, it may be unlicensed, so we'll find out here in a second. Okay, so, yep, we're going to accept the Lua here or Eula. Um, now, I'm going to change the directory here. For my installation, I have DCS installed in its own hard drive, and then I have a folder for DCS apps. That way I know where to find all my DCS stuff. I'm going to go ahead and just hit install. And sure, we can start the mod manager. Okay, now, if you go to install and it says, um, you know, warning, you know, this is an unknown file, just hit the, um, you know, view more, I think is what it says, and, and run it. All that means is that it's not licensed officially through Microsoft as a safe product. But, um, you know, there are plenty of products out there like that. It doesn't mean they're malicious, okay? Not everything that's unlicensed and malicious. Don't, don't get into the Microsoft hype. Okay. Now, I just tried this out today, so it, this is kind of cool. The first thing we want to do is create a new context, okay? And we're going to go next. In context title, I'm going to call it DCS World. 
Okay, context location, where to create the context home. I'm going to put this on my E drive and DCS locker. There we go. Resulting path, E, DCS locker, DCS world. Okay, that's cool. Okay, location title. Now, again, I'm just going to call this DCS world mods. Destination folder, where mods will be installed. Now, this is where you may have to create more than one package. There are certain mods, if, for example, if you find a mod that changes the way the cockpit looks in the aircraft, okay, you will have to um, install that into the core directory, okay? You can't use the saved games for things like that. Um, even that's not exactly true. Follow the installation instructions, but there's quite a few of them that that's not going to work. So what we're going to do here, though, is we're going to go to DCS World Mods, Okay, and we're going to go to destination folder. Because I do it like this, I just use the installation directory. Um, many people will use the saved games. It's totally up to you. That's the whole reason why we use this, and I'll explain it in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and find my open beta directory and hit OK. Custom library where mods are stored. Okay, so this is where when you download a mod, where are you going to put it? Okay, so this is where it's looking for the mods that you want it to install. Again, I have a folder. I'm going to go to mods here and hit OK. You can see I've already got a few there. So DCS, locker, mods, and then custom backup folder. What this will do is if it has to overwrite a file, is it will take the original and back it up. It'll store it automatically for you. And then if you remove the mod, it'll put the original folders or files back in. And I do have a custom one for this as well. So we're going to come here again, go to DCS, locker, mods, backup, boom. And I'm going to hit finish. Okay, now, this did happen to me last time, too, the, when I was messing with this earlier. So, if you run into this, because you can see here that this isn't quite right. Okay, um, it does, the library, if you look at the library, and I think this is just a bug. It, he does say in this, um, uh, right here, this stage is still in beta in, on this document. So, I was able to fix this stuff. We go edit, go to edit context. And we're going to edit properties. We're going to go here to locations. Okay, select DCS world mods. And we're going to hit modify. And all we have to do is change this back the other direction. See what it did? It reversed it. So actually, I could have done that on the installation. If you guys catch this, you can reverse it. But, so we're going to come in here and just go to uh, DCS locker mods. Hit OK. Custom backup folder again. And go to... Um, DCS World Mods, Mods Backup. And you know what? I think I actually clicked the wrong one, so give me a second here. I did. Okay, no, we're good. All right. So now when I hit Apply, there, there's all my mods. Okay? So this is a neat way to um, add and remove mods. So, for example, one of the ones that I like to use is a uh, crew status dash, okay? And what this does is the UH-1 Huey has this window that always sticks up. It's always there. It's a real immersion breaker that tells you what the status is of your gore, gore wow, of your door gunners and your co-pilot, all right? And I hate it. And so what this does is it puts that um, information on the dashboard of the Huey to make it look like it's just like a LCD screen that's telling you that and takes it out of your field of view that way it doesn't break the immersion and so all I'm going to do is click it hit install and we're done that's it and then if I decide that it you know um, it might actually be an integrity breaker let's find out I'll show you guys how to find that out okay and what we're talking about is if we go to multiplayer this green shield right here will tell you right away if you are breaking integrity check. So that mod I just installed does not break integrity check. If this is red, you are breaking integrity check, which means you cannot go to any of these servers that have this green shield here. Okay, by the way, while we're in here, this is the name that will appear to other players when you are in the chat or joining a multiplayer server. You can just click the edit button and change it to whatever you want. Okay, to join a server, you can simply just double click it and enter it. Um, you just want to watch if it has a lock on it. That means it's password locked. So you have to have a password to get into it. You can filter by the map that is currently being played. Okay. You can filter by the region. Okay. Um, in my case, obviously, I would pick um, uh, 
let's see what would that be oh north america right there all right so there's a couple different server options you can start typing you know if you wanted let's try to find the 104th there they are there's the 104th okay or if you have an ip address of a server you can connect to that right away okay so with that being said let's go ahead and get out of the multiplayer section and real quick i'll show you what my mod did there yep there it is see so what this normally is without it there'd be this giant window right here that moves with the camera that tells you all of this information and what this is real quick just so you guys understand why it's annoying this is the right now for example the co-pilot is told not to shoot he's on a hold and he's told to shoot in short bursts okay now he doesn't have a gun attached to him so now you can see this is how much gun is left short burst not allowed to fire but if for example if I open the door for that gunner now he's set to return fire okay in short bursts and there's a hundred percent ammunition left all right so that's all that does and instead of having this big horrible window it moves it over here to the dashboard it does not break integrity check this is a controls indicator I think I've shown you guys this before in the previous in uh, tutorial um, you can hit control and enter and get rid gets rid of that all right but so there are some mods that that serve a good purpose that don't uh, break integrity check now let's find one that does and I'll show you what I mean about um, mods that are good and mods that are bad. Um, yeah, like this guy here. So we're going to, again, extract it. Now, you can see this one says OVGME JSME ready. Okay, this, these are both um, that mod manager I'm showing you guys right now. This is the successor to OVGME. Okay, it's the, basically the updated version of it. So I'm going to rename this. Okay, now we're always read the readme text. Okay, I'm gonna go with Notepad plus plus. It's easier. All right, and OVGME installation. A lot of these guys are really good about this, giving you a readme and telling you um, what to do if it doesn't have a readme. Check the description where you downloaded it from. A lot of times it'll be there as well. So keep the file structure of the mod. Copy the F18C textured zip. So let's go ahead and go find that for a second. I know where he's going with this from DCS mods aircraft F-18C so we're going to go to our installation directory and he said mods right yep where are you there you are mods aircraft F-18C cockpit textures and he said to copy this so we're just going to copy, right click and copy, and copy it into the LCD MDI mods. So we're going to go here, mods, aircraft, F-18C, cockpit, textures folder, paste. Okay, mod and place my custom textures from F-18C cockpit textures into the zip. Overwriting the original files, you can then use the entire mod with mod manager. So. What, we, what he's saying is that we're going to open this up, grab these guys, copy. Now, the cool thing about zip files, you can open them. So there we go. And I'm just going to hit left control or any control and V for Victor. Paste in, copy and replace like he said. Ah, oh, it's making me do it with everything. Why is it not asking me if I want to do this with everything? There we go. Okay, that's done. So now we have this mod. Okay. And this was, well, that's the original installation, so we can close that for a second. I think I closed one too many windows. I did. And now we're going to go back to our downloads. Find this folder. And this is the one we want. You only want one folder before the installation directory. So in this case, what I'm meaning by that is if we bring up another folder again, this is the installation directory okay so we only want one folder before the install so mods mods okay if you have anything bef else before that it's going to try it's going to create whatever folder so example if we had another folder 
Okay, for example, actually, I think if we look at it, yeah, so if it was like this, it would be wrong. So if we took, if we just took this folder and copied it in, this folder would then be created in here. Okay, and then it would keep going, but it would be wrong. DCS wouldn't know what to do with that. Okay, so the mod wouldn't work. So F18C, this is one that we want. So we're going to grab this guy. We're going to hit cut. We're going to go to our DCS locker. We're going to go to our mods folder. We're going to hit paste. Now that we've completed all the instructions here. Huh, I'll be damned. Going to hit replace there. Now what we're going to do is hit close here. We need to exit DCS. Anytime you're installing a mod, you need to exit. Same thing with uninstalling. Exit the, the sim first. Okay. And now we should be able to see, there it is right there, this guy. And we're going to hit install. Okay. And done. And if we come in here, for example, go to our DCS locker and find mods backup. Okay. We can see... Here's our backup directory. Here's all the original files. Okay, so this is everything that we just copied in, but these are the default. So if we uninstall, the original files will be put back in. Okay, so that way you don't break it. So, let's go ahead and relaunch DCS. Okay, now that we're back in the sim, we'll go back into our, our game here. We'll verify that the mod is working. And that is definitely working. So these are normally very, very green, like this, like the UFC is here, for those of you who don't know. Okay, so this is, the idea behind this is it makes things a little bit easier to see. Okay, um, I believe with the targeting pod, it actually makes it color. Okay, but it does take away the color map, I just noticed that. But so these are one of the many mods that you can do that can be a lot of fun you know it's, it's it's good time modding isn't a bad thing as long as you understand there's always a risk um but as long as you do your do do wow i'm gonna start over as long as you do your due diligence that is a mouthful um you know and back everything up you'll be fine but like for example if we go into multiplayer now it's red so this mod and it tells you exactly what the issue is so when you click on it, it tells you why okay it tells you these um files are breaking the integrity check so in order for us to join any of these servers with the green shield we'd have to remove these so basically the mod would have to be removed so there are some mods that break ic is what we call it and there are some mods that don't um anything like i said if i believe that mod gave the tgp a color screen um obviously that makes it a heck of a lot easier to see targets on the ground okay versus that green tint um, so that would certainly um, put others at a disadvantage okay so any mod like that is going to break IC okay that's messing with the core or original installation files alright so that's mod installation in a hand basket now and one more cool thing I'll show you guys that this now I haven't even gotten to try this yet so we're about to do this together but I think you can make batches here so let's go a new batch okay and so this tells you what's installed and I'm going to put, um, let's do this. Do you like the, no, I don't want to do quick create. So I'm going to move these back over. And let's say I wanted to make one um, big install for the Spitfire. So that one's one, and that one's one. And let's call it just Spitfire mods okay and hit okay and what I could do here there we go so now essentially what it's doing and we'll see it here in a second I'm sure yep is it installed deliveries and it installed um, I think these are gun sounds is what those were uh, maybe a couple cockpit textures I can't remember exactly um, so that makes that pretty cool. You can install multiple mods at once. Um, now, what does delete do? Does it actually delete it? Yeah. So it doesn't look like you can uninstall it the same way. But boom, there we go. Mods are uninstalled. Um, 
and actually I shouldn't have had the game running when I did that. That was a no-no. Now the one thing that should also be is I'm gonna go ahead and hit uninstall there. All right, so anyway, that's Mod Manager. This is an easy way to manage your mods. The biggest thing to remember when dealing with mods is you must have the file structure correct. So if you download a mod and it's not in the correct structure for the installation, okay, you download something and it doesn't have all the folders that you need, okay, the aircraft, whatever, you know, wherever, wherever it goes, you need to create that folder structure before the installation files, right? And maybe I'll show you guys that on a different day. Um, I want to keep moving because there's a couple other things I want to show you guys. So those are a couple tools on how to um, install mods, okay? Um, and a lot of the mods can go into the saved games directory, okay? And those are ideal because 99% of the time, I don't even think they, I don't think I've seen one that does, they don't break integrity check, okay? So um, only the ones that have to be installed in the core installation have a very high potential to break IC. All right, so let's go ahead and exit here. Okay, let's bring our browser back. Um, we should be good with the directories for a minute, but I'll just move it over. The next tool that I want you guys to be aware of is the updater GUI. Okay, DCS updater, this thing is pretty slick. Here we go, download the latest version. Looks like it was just recently updated on June 12th. That's not bad. Did I click it? thought I clicked it. There we go, now I clicked it. Okay, so DCS updater GUI utility. Now we're gonna come back into our downloads. And where are you? There you are. And I'm going to extract it to the same folder. I always do that just to be sure. All right, and all we need is the EXE. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab the whole folder, go to Applications, DCS Apps, and we'll drop it right in here. I'm go DCS Updater and launch the Updater Utility. Okay, sorry about that, I had a bit of a hiccup. So. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up here. So the first thing that we want to do is create a name. In this case, it's going to be open beta. And you may have both. You may have open beta and stable. So you'd create one for each. The installation path, we're going to find where DCS is installed, which we're going to come here and go to this PC, applications, DCS world open beta. And we just want that top directory. Hit OK. Saved games folder path again. We're going to come here. We're going to find the C drive this time. Users, your logon, saved games, and again, DCS open beta. And hit OK. All right. Now, as long as you have green lights right here, okay, both of these are correct. If the left one is red and the right one's green, it means the right folder is right, the left folder is wrong. Okay, it means it can't find the installation folders. Okay, now another cool thing is you can come over here and you can select other applications to launch with DCS. So for example, I have SRS, which we'll talk about in a minute, Simple Radio, and I can browse to it, and here it is. This is my full installation location. I'm just going to find this client exe, and hit open. Okay, then I'm going to come down here, external applications launch with DCS launch external applications with DCS okay so now when I launch DCS these applications we're gonna select it will launch with it now that's if I hit this launch button and I'm gonna show you guys in a second here we're not quite done yet but this is just the setup process um, don't worry about these license files uh, the config folders we'll talk about later on um, actually I don't know if I'll get that far into it today I, I don't want to overwhelm you guys with a whole bunch of craziness um, so what we're gonna do here is says no build selected when we click on it we can find the build that we just created okay this is the build okay and so now launch can be clicked update repair clean so you can launch DCS with its current settings whatever you have them set to inside the sim you can update it from here repair it clean it so all cleaning does is removes any files or uh, folders that don't actually belong inside the installation this could be old backup installation uh, files from updates it could be mods that maybe are broken and left pieces behind all kinds of stuff dedicated server mode this is if you're using DCS to run a dedicated server so you're not actually going to be flying on this computer or on this installation um, that's handy there 
VR on or VR off, you can actually launch it in VR mode from here. Oculus Mirror, if you're an Oculus user, um, brings up the full screen uh, mirror image on your monitor. Okay, Model Viewer allows you to view the different Model Viewers. We use Model Viewer 2 now. And then, of course, your updater settings. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you guys are going to want to peek through. Aircraft modules, you can come here and you can find their documentation, things like that. Same with campaigns, your theaters, training modules, um, advanced update options. There's different updates, um, options that you can have. I'm not going to go through every one. Okay, again, and then back to the application settings. This is where we want to be at the moment. So real quick, right now we have our open beta selected. We have SRS and TeamSpeak. Let's go ahead and just hit the launch button. Oh, it wants to update. That's why. Uh, so does TeamSpeak. So my TeamSpeak launched, just so you guys can see that. Okay, and we'll exit that. All right, so that's the updater GUI, and it makes it really handy for new people, or new users, I should say, or really anybody, actually. It doesn't even have to be new. Um, it makes it really handy switching between the different variations of DCS, switching between different installations, um, launching between VR and not VR. I'd say those, that's probably one of its biggest advantages is you don't have to launch it in VR, disable VR, wait for it to restart. You, know, you can just select it manually from there. So kind of cool. So next thing we're going to take a look at is... Um, we already talked briefly about RS Mapper. I've already got two tutorials. I'll leave a link to one in the description below. There's one already right here. And then if you actually go to the last page, I think, you may even find it. There's another one right there. Um, but I'll le leave a link to this one in the description below. Um, but this is really handy, as I talked about br uh, before, um, for uh, key mapping. If you're very limited on keys and you need uh, or limited on buttons, this is a really neat software. I highly recommend you take a look at it. Again, it allows you to use the same button for multiple functions. Um, really helpful. Okay, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Like I said, there's already two videos out on it that I've done. The other one I want you guys to see is this scratch pad. Okay, DCS scratch pad is freaking awesome. This is exactly what it does right here. And it works both in the um, in VR. Um, and you can see that right there. It works also works on um, 2D. Has a lot of really neat functions. Um, I highly recommend that you come here. Okay, this sort of breaks down how it how to install it, how it all works, etc. Um, really, really cool piece of software. Why are you being difficult? Sorry, guys, my mouse is doing something really weird. So give me a second. That stuttering thing is actually happening. Um, but uh, it basically just gives you a, a notepad to bring up while you're in the sim. So whether you're in VR or on the monitor, it makes it really handy if you're writing down coordinates and things like that, or if you just need to take quick notes. Um, it's really it's really nice to have. So I highly recommend that you guys download this. And by the way, all these mods, make sure you guys recognize that I did not develop any of these. I have not developed any of these tools. These are all made by other community members. Full credit goes to them. Okay, um, and let's go to tools again. This is one that was brought to my attention the other day. This one's pretty neat. It does cost $9.99 on Google Play, but if you have an Android device, um, the A10C, the AV8B Harrier, the F14 Tomcat, the F16, the F18C Hornet, the JF17, the KA50, and the Mirage M2000, um, you can have the UFC right on your phone screen. Uh, there's a script you have to set up. You have to know a little bit about your network, but any questions, you guys are welcome to ask me or in, anyone in the community. Um, I pretty sure there's a YouTube tutorial on this. I'm probably going to run one myself once I get it up and running. Um, I just found out about this again the other day and I just found it today. Um, but you can actually control the UFC from your phone. Okay, so having it right at your fingertips versus, versus having to reach down, grab the mouse, etc. like that, everything is going to be right here. So again, $9.99, totally worth it in my opinion. Um, it's definitely something f that new uh, new pilots should definitely look into. It's going to be a big game changer and uh, significantly less frustration not having to reach for the mouse to um, use the UFC. So again, really cool app. Very cool. Um, great work on the developer. And then we come to DCS Simple Radio Standalone. This is used, used very heavily in, and this is what I was trying to bring up, this was used this is used very heavily in multiplayer servers in DCS right now and what it does is it basically simulates real-world radios 
So you go into the F-18 Hornet or whatever aircraft you're flying, you can you actually have to, if you're flying with a friend and he's flying on frequency, just throwing a number, 305, okay, uh, megahertz on channel one, on radio one, you need to set one of your radios to 305 in order to talk to him and hear each other. Okay, so it really simulates real world traffic. Um, really neat, you can set radio one to come out your right ear, radio two to come out your left ear. Um, it's um you can be hearing you know if you're flying with f-18s and f-14s f-14s are on frequency on one um or a i should say you know hornets are on frequency b you could have one radio tuned to your tomcats one radio tuned to the hornets and hear them both at the same time you can have one radio tuned to the AWACS. And that's, again, multiplayer. If you have an AWACS up in the air and they're using this, you actually have to tune your radios to the frequency in order to hear the, the AWACS or the tanker or whomever you're talking to. Um, so this is a really, really cool tool. Um, really adds a ton of immersion. You There's um, a bunch of different options, and I'll go over an installation on this separately if um, within the next couple of days. Um, but um, it, he, they break it down very well here. There's even a place that you can come to ask for help on the Discord. Um, it's got its own installer. Asks you what you need to do. Um, so anyway, really neat. It even adds a radio effect. So it actually sounds like you're talking from a radio. You can add things like line of sight and distance uh, static. As the, you, you and your friend get further and further apart, you'll start getting static and you'll hear each other less and less until eventually you won't be able to talk to each other at all because you're too far apart. And again, these are all options. You don't have to use it like that. So, um, anyway, I highly recommend you guys look into this if you're going to be doing a multiplayer. Uh, single player doesn't serve really any purpose, um, but multiplayer, absolutely. Many of the servers are using it. Um, let's see here. I think, oh, the last one I want to try is Voice Attack. This is another paid software. You can run a free trial, but what allows you to do is execute keyboard commands with your voice. So you could basically configure it, and I have a tutorial I will link in the description below to how this all works and how to set it up. Um, but you can basically say things like, let's say you're taking off. You, instead of reaching for your mouse or reaching for your keyboard or reaching for that switch on your HOTAS to lift your gear up, you can just say the words, gear up. And what it will do is send the command, um, I think it's left, control, and G on your keyboard, and bring the landing gear up. Okay, and you can do this with anything really you want it. Anything that you can think of that can be done by a keyboard can be done with voice attack by just saying a few words. Uh, you can set up sequences. You know, if you want to talk to the crew chief and tell him to repair, you can just say, hey, chief, repair. Okay, you create the command. Anyway, you'll understand more about this one by checking out the link in the description below that will tell you how to use this. Um, but again, uh, it does have a free trial. It is a purchased um, software though at the end, but yeah, see, it's, it's 10 bucks. And absolutely worth it and again this is very 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 uh critical piece of software for anyone who doesn't have all the bells and whistles the buttons the switches the hotas the throttles this is a must have for you guys because it's going to significantly as long as you have a headset with a microphone it's going to significantly um reduce your workload and um, because you can do everything with with a, a couple of words right down to rearm and refuel to if you really want to get crazy um, you can say fire missile and you'll fire your missile, right? Whatever it may be. But anyway, um, like I said, check out one more time, check out the link in the description below and you guys, um, will see how this software works. Okay. Um, trying to see if there's anything else that I want to catch you guys with knee boards. Um, let's go ahead and go over that real quick. Let's, let's find a knee board real fast. And I'm gonna show you guys how to install knee boards because there's a lot of really handy knee boards out here. So let's go back here. We're gonna go to user files again. And then we're gonna go to document, I believe is what it is. And let's find, let's find something different this time. Let's look at, uh, let's look at the Huey. All right, so right here, this is one of the cool parts about knee boards is this a checklist okay so especially if you're new and you're not remembering the startup or things like that let's go for uh that's probably not in english doesn't look like it is let's double check make sure i'm not assuming but it doesn't look like it uh, it doesn't tell you what's in it anyway here we go quick checklist let's use this one okay doors ac power phase main gen yeah this is the startup checklist right here so let's use this real quick let's grab this Okay, 
And as I say before, it's in a RAR file, so we're going to want that. Let's go to Downloads. And where'd you go? Here it is. So we're going to extract it. Let's see what its folder structure is. Here it goes. Kneeboard. So these are these guys are cool. They they set it up for you. Um, but always check the README. You know, extract this users uh, your name. Yep, saved games DCS. And I've already got a few. But if you didn't have it, we're just going to cut this. I'm going to go to my open beta. Here's Kneeboard. And I'm just going to paste it in here. And we'll find our UH1H, and there's our kneeboard. Okay, so it's got two different kneeboards for us: shutdown checklist, after takeoff checklist, landing, external cargo. That's pretty cool. And then, yeah, runs through the startup checklist. This is all, it's all right on money. Okay. And so these can be brought up on your kneeboard, which is a whole different tutorial, um, but they're pretty simple. Um, look up in your controls for your particular aircraft kneeboard controls it's i think it's the same across any aircraft um ship right shift and k to bring it up the open and close brackets to switch through the pages right control k to mark your point right shift k again to turn it back off okay but again you can have kneeboards for each aircraft and what this software that i was about to show you is And this is another one. I'm not going to go into it. Um, w I'll do a tutorial on this. It's pretty simple. But you can actually create your own kneeboards through, with documents. Um, you drag and drop your PDF files um, to kneeboard ready images. Um, you can create your own custom kneeboards. You can take pictures of screenshots and things and have them in your kneeboards. There's all kinds of Here we go. Show me how. Um, so, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's already here. Installation setup, kneeboard builder, kneeboard basic. Sorry for the horrible view. I have a filter on. Um, importing files, copying, and modifying groups. Like, this is good stuff. So, I won't do a tutorial on this because they already exist. So, anyway, guys, these are things that you can do to create your own kneeboard. You can create it from a text document. You know, if you want to write yourself your own notes. Gosh, I always forget X, Y, Z when I'm doing this. I really wish I had a way to quickly look at it. You know, it's really helpful, especially if, again, if you're flying in VR, you know, you don't want to be taking your head out of the headset every couple seconds trying to pause the sim to read certain things. Um, really awesome. Uh, really good stuff. Um, so I think I've covered everything that I can cover today. I, I hope that this was helpful to you guys. Yep, there's SRS. So it did launch, by the way. Um, I really hope this stuff was helpful to you guys. I know that, um, that it's, again, starting out DCS is tough. There's so much information, and it's so scattered all over the place. Um, and um, I, I get it. Just stick with it, guys. Ask questions. We're all here. Uh, the community as a whole is an awesome community, very helpful group of people. Uh, just like anywhere else, you're going to have those less favorable ones. But I would say as a whole, the DCS community is awesome. Um, I'm sorry if this was sort of a scattered video, if I jumped around a little bit. Again, I've never really done videos like this before. I'm just trying to further that goal of my channel. The whole goal of my channel is to smooth off the, the learning curve that comes with DCS World. So uh, look out for the next one, guys. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Check out my tutorials if you're interested in any of the aircraft that are available. Um, and uh, stay in the air, guys. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.